everybody. Uh, welcome to our Career Path panel. Today we have with us Anushka and Anushri. Hi everyone. My name is Anushri. Um, I graduated TISV class of 2016, so it was a while ago. Um, I just recently graduated from the University of California, San Diego um, in 2020, and I majored in applied math and economics. Um, and then currently I am working at Microsoft uh, as part of the financial rotation program. So they have a program where you get kind of get four rotations each for six months um, and you get to explore different parts of corporate finance. So treasury, investor relations, um, just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, and my current role is doing the financial and business planning for all of the consumer devices at Microsoft. So that's Xbox, Surface, um, Office, and Windows. So, yeah. Hey, y'all. I'm Anushka, like Anushree, graduated from TISB, class of 2016. Um, I recently, actually, it's been a year now, I graduated from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, back in December. And right before the wonderful pandemic hit us, I landed one of my dream jobs at this market research firm called Cantar. And what I do is I work with several clients um, like Disney, Netflix, um, Pepsi, and we help them understand consumers better. So we do consumer market research and other consulting um, projects with them to just get a better idea of who people are and how they can um, serve and market them. Um, so that's where I am right now. And I studied media and journalism back in um, college with the concentration in advertising. A, a typical day, I would say, honestly, since it's like a consulting field, I would say every day is very, very different, but there's like some key tasks that I do every day. Um, the first is always like checking through emails for, I have to respond to clients and I'm an account manager. So I have daily conversations with clients. So I'm always going through my emails, seeing um, if, clients ever need me, how I can help them. And when I'm working on project work, um, it's usually, you know, data analysis, creating decks, telling stories, um, coming up with ideas to host workshops with our clients. So it has um, two main roles. One is client management and one is the project work that we do. So kind of flip around between both of them. And the project work is pretty interesting, just like depends. Sometimes I'm answering questions about hey, how can we better understand the LGBTQ plus consumers and how can you market to them and what do they care about? Um, and just helping our um, clients understand those target audiences better, what matters to them and how that, um, what, what implications can those um, findings have for our clients? So it's just about thinking deeply about who people are and communicating that to the clients. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about what my day is like. Consulting tends to have crazy-ish hours. <laughs> I think honestly, most jobs do right now. So it's, um, it just depends what every day is like. Unlike Anushka's job, my job is not client facing. So my work is for the company that I add and not for someone else. And so that kind of gives me more of a, like a nine to five sort of uh, work schedule. Cause you know, it's just within the company, but um, some of the stuff that I do, um, I do a lot of weekly forecasting. So really thinking about, you know, how much are we projecting to sell um, in the next week and then kind of modeling um, the forecast according to that. And then, so there is, I guess this mathematical aspect, which is kind of like the modeling part and like the data science part. And then there's also this economics and like psychology aspect where you're trying to understand consumer behavior and what is the consumer going through at that point. So like, oh, like back to school is happening, you know, kids like it's COVID, they need laptops. So, you know, we need to factor that into our projections because that probably means sales are going to go up. Right. And then there's also this cultural piece to it, because I do it for not just North America, but Europe and then Asia and all across. So there's also this cultural piece where it's like, oh, Chinese New Year's is coming up. So in China, we might expect, 
you know, sales to go up or, you know, grandmas are going to be buying gift cards, guys, because they don't know what game to buy on the Xbox, right? Stuff like that. So there's this cultural piece and then this consumer psychology piece and then this mathematical piece that kind of all go together and then help me do my forecasting and modeling. And then I also do a lot of ad hoc projects. So really understanding like what people in the finance department are doing and then how can we automate that? And can we reduce like some of this stuff that they keep doing over and over again by you know, creating some models or creating um, some machine learning um, things, so yeah. <laughs> okay, I think I kind of touched upon it already um, to some extent where I spoke about how the math and the econ kind of comes into play. And then I also had a minor in finance, so I'm working in finance. <laughs> so I guess, um, yeah. Um, in terms of other things, I did a lot of research uh, when I was at university. I was a research assistant to two or three professors at the business school while I was there. Um, and while what I researched to some extent does not directly relate to what I'm doing, but that experience I think was really helpful because you know, I wanted to work with data and during, doing research is, I mean, depending on the field is pretty quantitative and you have to not only you know, crunch the numbers, you wanna tell the story about like, so what? Like you found this, but so what, right? And that's essentially what I'm doing even at work, which is looking at all this data and saying like, hey, like this is the story behind uh, all of that. So yeah, and other than that, clubs, extracurriculars, um, I was part of a business fraternity at UCSD, Delta Sigma Pi, and um, that was really great. I found a lot of mentors, which I think um, is really essential to not just your career, but like any goals that you have for yourself, you always want to find people who can, who, who's invested in you, right? Who really wants to see you succeed. And um, I found that through the business fraternity. Um, and what else? I did a lot of leadership stuff and I guess that's really good for building um, interpersonal skills. And especially if you want to work for a tech company or, you know, and I think any company now, they're really looking for people who are leaders. They're looking for people who have those soft skills. And so even though it's not directly related to what you want to do, I would definitely, definitely try to get as involved as possible um, if you have the time, because it would really help you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm going to definitely echo that. You, it's really important to participate in leadership at college, like 100% join clubs, join organizations that you care about and try to you know learn a lot in those experiences um for me i think um the major that i did in advertising every single one of my classes had multiple group projects and that's like very very helpful because in the real world let's be honest you are never working alone you're always working with people and just like learning how to work in a team of people who are different from you very very important and also I created so many presentations and learned the art of storytelling. Um, and that's just so important. Like you will be creating as like an entry level person, a lot of decks, like not gonna lie. It's gonna be a big part of your job and just like telling a story in a thoughtful and like in a way that someone wants to listen to you. That's something I learned from university and I am definitely carrying that through right now. Um, but also I was um, the marketing coordinator for an organization on campus that um, engaged students to participate in many activities. So we would organize concerts and art galleries and just like several other events. And I think that was super helpful because it helped me, you know, I, I was the point person to communicate with students and find out what they wanted and then helping, you know, entertain them or like caring for their needs. So that's kind of what I do right now. I try to understand what consumers care about and feel and communicate that to clients. So it's kind of, um, a great parallel, um, but 100% agree with Anushree. Like, I think the most amazing part of my college experience was like the extracurricular stuff I did. So, do more than class. Like, that's the one yeah. piece of advice I can give anybody. Yeah, I think I would just add on to that. And I think maybe Anushka will agree. But I think, like, whatever you learn in your classes, right? I think you would use like 40%, like 
40 or 30 percent of that maybe like, less so I'm not even okay I'm being generous <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't want people to think it's like useless but like I'll just give you yeah. an example like applied math like am I going to use like some abstract graph theory in my job no but like just statistics yeah like every day probability every day right and just developing that way of thought like that's important so directly maybe like 30 yeah. percent being generous but I think it depends on the field too but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and I think extracurriculars is also not necessarily something that you're thinking about in high school at all in in not saying that it should have a heavy influence on like when you make a college list and when you apply to colleges but I think like maybe once you're considering colleges or once you've gotten into colleges and you're narrowing them down and start looking at like what clubs are you interested in like what do they have like like if you're interested into theater do they have a theater club for you because if they don't then you know that sucks like you don't <laughs> like like that might be a criteria for you like it may or may not but yeah I have a very deep felt like sympathy for this question because like this is this is my journey like in high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. In college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So here's, um, in retrospect, this is what I learned. Um, in high school, I think most of our classes are very technical. Um, you know, you do science, you do math, you, and you just tend to focus on like very technical things. So I think whatever classes you're taking right now, really be mindful of like, what about those classes is interesting to you? Like, I think I didn't think of this as much in high school, but in, yes, it's really important to do well and get good grades, but like, what classes are you genuinely so excited to walk into every morning? Think about that. And like, believe it or not, there's so many career options for you, no matter what you like. So just pay a little bit more attention to like, what professor, or sorry, what teacher in class like gets your attention and what kind of content you really appreciate? Are you the kind of person who like really likes to do math and solve problems or are you enjoying those classes where you have discussions or presenting? Like what skills do you think make you shine? That's really important. And also in college, I like changed my major four or five times. Like I ended up doing advertising. Like I don't even know how I got there, but like I've done econ, I've done political science, I've done a little bit of psychology. Like I just took so many classes and I was interested in everything. And the role that I am in right now in market research, it is my job to basically know everything about everything and learn about the world. And so it's kind of perfect for me because I understood very late in my college career that like there's not one thing that is crazy exciting to me. It's just like everything right now. And there are roles for you in that area as well. So do not worry, you, you as a high schooler like are not supposed to know what the world holds for you. Like there's no pressure, especially if you're like trying to come to university in the United States, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of like changing your major. Yeah, of course, if you wanna like do medicine, you probably have to have a little bit more dedication, but just know you're gonna have a lot of flexibility, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't keep track of like what you're enjoying and what really, um, and there's like this really cool Japanese concept called Ikigai and I would like recommend that you read a little bit about it, but it's about what you like, what the world needs and what you're good at. So try to figure out that little balance in the middle and maybe hopefully uh, you figure, you know, something out that works for you. Personally, I knew what I wanted to study, so I didn't change my major but I didn't know what I was gonna do with it afterwards. And it, like, to be honest, it could have completely changed. I just went for that major cause I was like, hey, I tried econ in high school and it's probably what I like the most. So I'm just gonna go for it, right? Um, yeah, I think when you, especially if you don't live in the US, right? And you don't have that kind of exposure, um, you don't know even all the majors that are offered by the universities like I remember coming to UCSD and I was like what is cognitive science like like what is that and like nobody nobody was talking about it at school right like you might not even know all the things that are offered right so how are you supposed to pick what you want to do when you don't even know like all the things that are offered and what I would say is that do if you really really feel anxious about not 
picking the major, right? Like when you're applying, there are a lot of universities that allow you to explore for the first two years and then you have to declare your major, right? Like the liberal arts colleges. And, you know, that might be a criteria for, for you and that's perfectly fine, right? I, I think if that's a criteria, that's what you feel comfortable with, definitely explore those two years and then take your time. And it's normal. It's not, you're not weird. You're not, you know, you're not, you're not, you're still on track, right? Um, secondly, even if you think you know what you want to do, I would say still explore when you get to college, right? Like I, I was a math econ major, but I still took classes in the business school. I took marketing classes. I took a personal finance class. I took a dance class. I took a cognitive science class, a psychology class, a religion studies class, you know, and explore that because the way that they teach it at that level might click with you or it may may not click with you and you you and you'll find that all those experiences will kind of unexpectedly help you in your life as you go through it or just change your mind right so it's okay don't be nervous um and there's lots of options you know I'll share like one thing I did learn and then one thing I wish that I had learned. Um, the one thing that I did learn like a skill, definitely being at boarding school and like, you know, being at TISB, you have a lot of discipline in your schedule and you also have a right balance. And I think like when you're in that situation, like while you're through it, going through it, you're like, oh my gosh, like, why are they forcing us to do this? And like, oh, I just wanna do what I wanna do and not explore these things, right? But they'll force you to explore things, find a good balance for yourself that you, you know, I carried for the rest of my, like even now, right? Um, one thing I wish that I had like developed in high school, which I developed much later in college is really, you know, feeling comfortable to reach out to your network. Like if you're going to a school that specializes in, you know, helping people go to the US or the UK, like leverage your network. You, if you, especially like going back to your previous question, like if you don't know if you want to study physics or chemistry, like message an alumni, ask them like, you're studying this, what do you think? Like how, what kind of person would be successful and leverage that because if you don't, in some sense, I feel like you're missing out on this great opportunity that the school is creating for you, right? Um, and it'll help you, like doing those kind of informational interviews, it'll help you even when you're going for an internship or for a job search, because you do have to do those informational inter uh, interviews. You will have to go and find out what, what kind of jobs there are for you. And that's great practice if you can start doing that at a high school level. I definitely want to echo that I'm so glad y'all are doing this um I like the TISB alumni association is actually following through and like trying to connect people because it is so important to maintain or like foster those connections because like the way I got my job is I reached out to a UNC alum and she really pulled through there was like a hiring freeze because of the pandemic but like she fought for me to work there and if you do have those relationships with, with people and like, you know, if you reach out to like one of us, we went to TISB, we know the experience, we're a lot more likely to help you and like show you the ways because we, we know what it's like and we like really care about helping, you know, the generation that comes after us. So like reach out to all of us, um, definitely wanted to echo that. Um, but one thing I learned in TISB kind of off of what Anushree said was like that work ethic is so important like ig was hard ib was hard and i know like you're probably experiencing all of those emotions right now as well but you really learn to work hard and like work to succeed and i think that's a really important thing to learn in life is like set those goals and like work your best to achieve i mean you won't always make it but like i think just working the best that you can is so so important and also, I think TSB, like, I mean, this is kind of off, like, the more professional realm, but it taught me, like, how to maintain friendships. And, like, I don't know. I, I think the friends I've made in TSB will stay with me for life. And, like, just remember that, like, people also really matter in life. And, like, 
just take that with you wherever you go. Always try and search for like really good people to surround yourself with. And that just makes everything a lot more easier. Like the work ethic is kind of like the one thing that everybody has mentioned um like through, throughout my interviews um but like at its most basic level being able to like concentrate for two to three hours at a stretch is not something I could have done without TISB like I just can't like at the most basic level like that that is like like that is just a part of like a good work ethic of course there are many many other things but like I think like it, it really really does instill like a good work ethic into you yeah so I completely agree that and like on top of the IB curriculum I think they both like create like a really just yeah Good ethic, uh, work ethic for you. For me, one of the key decisions, um, like I mentioned, a lot of my work has to do with storytelling. So creating presentations to walk clients through, you know, a certain consumer segment they're interested in particular. So whenever you're telling a story, it's really important to like, if you have data with it and you have a visual component, you make decisions about hey, is this data point important? Does this actually tell the story? What aspects of this story actually matter and are relevant? And I think those decisions like really help you understand, like, you know, when you're like reading through a textbook and you have to like highlight the things that are important for you to read. And sometimes you end up highlighting the entire page because like everything seems important, but like filtering through what actually is relevant is just a skill that you'll need to do in the real world, especially because you need to, give people the TDLR version of anything. So that's one of the decisions. And um, another decision that I think I make pretty frequently um, on a very regular basis is just um, in terms of like resourcing and helping people out, like how can you manage your own time and like help people as much as you want to and still maintain your mental health and all of that. So like trying to push for that balance, like I definitely have not achieved it. Um, is really important. Like make decisions about how you work and how comfortable you are working in those ways and just like finding the right balance is um, just really, really important. Um, I think like there, there are definitely other things, um, but those are the two things that I would mention at this point. Yeah, I think mine is pretty similar to Anushka's um, in the sense, I think like when you're at an entry level position, right? Um, you're not doing so much of the decision making as the recommendation um, part of it and the information giving part of it, right? But you still have to decide and filter what information you wanna provide and what kind of recommendations you wanna make, right? So for me, um, I, I don't know, I do so many like random things, but um, if there's like a new product launching, um, I do a lot of work with that before it's even on the market. So kind of, you know, when do we want to release this? And, you know, where where do we want to release it? How much do we want to send out? How long is the pre-order going to, period going to be? Stuff like that. Um, analyzing previous data and kind of making those recommendations, right? Or, you know, looking at the past week's revenues and making recommendations for the next week. Um, stuff like that. Um, so filtering a lot of data and like making those recommendations. Other decisions, yeah, like Anushka said, um, I think you have to find the balance between doing your job and like finding opportunities to be proactive and grow within your job. So like a lot of times I'll be looking at things and then after a week or two, I was like, hey, we do that every week. Let me automate it. You know, if I write some code, this could just be done in like 13 seconds. So making those kind of decisions like, yeah, we can make this better or we can make this faster that. Um, and then, yeah, finding like a work-life balance and making those decisions, right? I think is interesting. One of the questions that I got while I was interviewing for Microsoft, they asked me, how do you know when it's time to go home, right? And making that decision and saying like, I've done the best that I can for today. And now I need to, I need to move on to my life and table this for tomorrow, right? And making that decision of finding that balance, um, yeah. Um, in terms of schedule, like I mentioned before, for me, it's like a pretty nine to five job. Um, and in terms of like mental health, I think the program that I'm part of at Microsoft is pretty great because yes, like you get those four rotations in, but you also have 40 other people who are like in the same class as you who are going through the same thing. So they're in other rotations and they have a lot of events for you to get to know those people. And I think that that's really important, like to have other people 
who are in the same boat as you, that really helps your mental uh, you know, health because you're like freaking out, but other people are freaking out too and they're going through the same thing, right? Yeah, and I think like that's another great thing about working at a tech company, um, I would say is like a lot of people wanna work at tech companies because of the work culture and like the work-life balance that you get with that and how much they encourage you to do stuff like outside work and like really get involved. Um, in terms of Bay Area, I would say like the most striking thing for me about the Bay Area, and this might be true for other places, but I'm just saying for the Bay Area is just how active everybody is. Like at any given time, like if you step out, you'll find someone like biking or like running or hiking or doing something. And I think that's really important because people are really looking out for their physical health and mental health. And so you're encouraged to do that as well. And yeah. So I actually, for me, it's kind of different because I work out of the New York office. I'm just here crashing with my uncle because I can right now. Um, so I'm working very early in the morning. Like my day will start at 7 a.m. And it will end when it has to end. I will say that. Um, right now, work-life balance is has been a challenge, full disclosure, especially in client-facing jobs. The, the demands and expectations are very high and turnaround times are very quick. So it can be a challenge. But honestly, the people I'm working with are amazing and they really really push me to like take time off or like try to find that balance I think it's just something I haven't necessarily figured out perfectly yet because like it's an entry-level person you constantly want to like tell people you help them and you want to do your best and like you know set show them that you are you know set the record straight about the kind of person you are and the work ethic you have so you want to you always try to like prove that you are worthy of being there. So it's kind of a challenge right now. But um, I will say I love what I do. So I don't mind doing it for extended periods of time. Um, but I, I enjoy being in the Bay Area because the weather is always phenomenal. Like um, initially, like when I intended to live in New York, I know that a lot of the people that I interned with over the summer, like especially a lot of TISD people are actually in New York right now. And we were like, I was supposed to live together with one of my best friends from high school and I was hoping to go out to restaurants on the weekend and like really have and enjoy the city um but I'm enjoying a lot of family time right now it has been amazing I think the online environment um and the flexibility it gives you is like hey in the middle of the day if you kind of are feeling very like frustrated or not energized you can go out go to the grocery store get a cup of coffee maybe drive around for a bit come back and finish work and everyone's just very accommodating because like some people have crazy kids in the background and just just the environment is less like formal and professional and people are just like now humans you know you're seeing their personal lives on screen literally so the flexibility I enjoy very much I do sometimes enjoy wearing pajamas to work which I do very often <laughs> these days <laughs> um so like I I enjoy it but I think um I think going into the office will help me establish that work-life balance because it's like, hey, when it's time to go home, maybe you switch off. So that's, uh, that's my piece. I think one thing I'll add just because Anushka mentioned it is like weather. And I know it's like, sounds like a really small thing, but I think even when you like, even when you go to university, right? And you do have that choice of picking like a college in a better weather like area, you, you definitely want to consider that because it does directly impact like your mental health. It impacts like your ability to be productive and like it doesn't affect your mood. So like, I know it sounds like a really small thing and a lot of people are like, oh, like if I get into the best, I'll just live even in Siberia, I don't care. But you know, you don't realize like when you have to live there for four years or 10 years, like if you're working, you're gonna care, you're gonna care. <laughs> and um yeah, if you're making that choice, something definitely to consider. Yeah, I was just like talking to my like my aunt yesterday and she lived in Boston for like six years and she was like, first year, fine, snow. I thought it was so cool. I thought it was so great. <laughs> Second year, it's okay. Like it was like, okay, fine. Like it's cold, but like if I wear enough clothes, I'll manage. And then like 
basically continued to get like progressively like worse and like at the end she was like I want to leave like I cannot deal with the cold so I think weather definitely plays like a large part yeah Yeah. especially also if you're like an outdoorsy active person I think that's definitely something I mean I think I'm guessing like most of the audiences in Bangor like you we're spoiled for weather there and like Shaila you'll you'll agree like you're in San Diego in November yeah. on the beach and all your friends in Boston and Chicago and New York are wearing the yeah. heaviest jackets on the planet and complaining oh. about the snow. Yeah. Like, <laughs> where do you want to be? <laughs> uh, I'll probably just like start with my internship experience. So last summer I interned with Ogilvy, which is a really big ad agency. And I just, you know, I, have, I didn't think I'd get in because like there are, crazy huge and I didn't even like um think there was a chance for me again I applied and like somehow I managed to get the interviews and got through and I think what is really important and in their application they also made us write an essay so it was kind of like a college application where I like was submitting three essays to show them who I was and that application was particularly easy for me because my personality mattered a lot. Like they wanted to know about me and who I was as a person. And the interviews were also kind of oriented in that sense. They wanted to see what kind of work culture I would fit into. So that was easy for me, but all through like my senior semester, senior year of um, college, I was trying to get into consulting So like strategic consulting, so like McKinsey, Bain, EY, think of like those firms. And I like stress myself out a lot preparing for case interviews and doing super technical interviews. And like, I got to the final round at so many places, but I didn't get it. At the end of college, I did not have a job and I had spent six months of my life really, really prepping for very technical interviews. And I realized that like, maybe that wasn't the best place for me. So then I started reaching out to my um, network and alumni at UNC and asking them, hey, you know, like, just like having conversations. And then I ended up um, getting in touch with someone at Kantar. And Kantar is actually a a company I worked with at my internship back at Ogilvy. And so I was able to make that connection. And I, Again, the interview process was very human oriented. They wanted to see what kind of person I was, what I cared about. And I realized like that's where I shine. For me, if the application process is like human, then I am able to like excel in it. And technical interviews where like I have to do math in front of like some senior manager, I like I had a very difficult time doing that. So um, I think it's really important to be mindful about the application process like if you feel like you're stronger in certain areas versus others like definitely get a lot of practice um and get your peers to help you out if you feel like you're gonna struggle a little bit going back to internships i think it's the hardest to get your first internship because the application will be like what experience do you have and you're like this is the experience I'm applying for. (laughs) I'm trying to get the experience, right? And you're like, so you're telling me I need experience to get experience, right? And I think that first internship is always the hardest. And um, I would would also say like, I know like if you're picking colleges, something to think about, um, there are target schools and non-target schools. So like, for example, Um, let's take investment banking, for example, like UCSD is not a target school. So what that means is like those companies will not be coming to the career day um, to recruit, right? Um, But accounting, like all big four come to UCSD because it is a target school for those, right? And those are things to really, really think about when you're picking the university. And those are great questions to ask like admissions officers or like um, any other official at the university too when you're researching, like you know, what kind of firms come to your career day and stuff like that. Um, So anyway, so I went to a school that was not a target school for tech companies, right? And now it's changing, like now it is, like a lot of tech companies come there. But when I was there, it wasn't. And so, you know, when you're doing the first internship, I think your network is the most important, like, thing there. Like, having connections is, like, really, really important. And that's where I go back to where I said that I wish I had built like a stronger network while I was in high school and really reaching out to the alumni because 
they can help you. They can help you get internships. They can recommend you, right? So yeah, I think getting the first internship was the hardest. Um, after that, it becomes a little bit easier. Um, in terms of job <laughs> applications, like full disclosure, like I only applied to one company, uh, Microsoft, um, and that was because I was applying to grad schools and I had oh, okay. a zero intention of like going and working for a company. Um, so I only applied to one and then I got that opportunity and I was weighing my choices and I thought that it was a really good idea to take that two year break um, before going to a grad school um, and doing that. But again, I would say like a lot of practice for interviews. Um, I think people don't realize like you feel, even if you're doing college interviews, by the way, practice. Um, if you're too shy to practice with your friends, um, practice in front of the mirror, like look at yourself and practice. Cause even though you think you know what you're gonna say, even to a simple question, like tell me about yourself, like when you actually start talking and then you reflect, you, you'll be like, oh, I wish I had said that. But if you practice, you will know like all the things you wanna say when the question is asked to you. Um, so practice, build a network. I, I completely agree with um, about like practicing for interviews. I think that's very important. I think also, um, utilizing resources, whether it's in, you're in high school and you're trying to get into college, or whether it's in college and you're trying to get a job, like utilizing the resources around you, your college has like more resources than you can use, you know, mm -hmm. like, and I, I think it's, a, it's really important to like, yeah, re uh, reach out and like, and use those resources. Right. And I think like, maybe just having a little bit of humility helps. Like, I think like, sometimes you feel like, yeah, like I know what I'm doing. Like I know I, I I know how to build a resume. I did a lot of research, but like um, ask people to review it. Ask people to look at it. Ask your career center. Ask your parents. Like they're professionals. Like they know. Um, ask alumni, your friends, even even if you think they don't know what they're talking about. Ask them. Right. Get comfortable showing your work to others and like getting that um, feedback. I am an international student and I will tell you this, um, especially given the current political climate, being an international student is um, challenging in many ways. Like in college, um, I went to UNC and not gonna lie, not much international student diversity over there. And so a lot of times I was conscious about my accent or the color of my skin and you will, even if you don't face like very explicit discrimination at times, you get very conscious of the kind of person you are. But just know that who you are is incredibly valuable to all of the conversations you're having in classrooms or even in the workforce. Like you, your experience, your background is a huge asset. So never feel ashamed or shy because of it. And I think it's really important to own it. And if you're ever feeling that way, if you're feeling like scared or like, feeling anxious about all of those things like reach out to us or reach out to people in your community like seek out and seek help like I think it's really important to always just like know that we all go through this like what initially when you come here I feel like a lot of us grew up watching like uh, American TV shows and we think we know what America is like but it's just very different when you actually come here I mean I, I can't speak for other countries particularly but like it is challenging to go through that transition so if you're struggling through that like reach out to people like us who've like been through that um, it will be helpful also getting a job is very hard because most companies like I remember I was in one interview and it was going really well and as soon as they somehow figured out I was international they were like oh we don't even hire um, so it was immediately like very demotivating for me to continue with that interview but um, a lot of companies will say no, but I don't, I don't want you to feel like it's impossible at all, especially if you like leverage your network. Um, and I think like having that perspective and background is a big asset and a lot of people are recognizing that, especially now. So um, just like hang in there. It, it is hard, but like you'll get used to it very easily and you'll have to work extra hard because the opportunities that you have will be limited but it'll just mean that you'll probably end up at a really cool company doing exactly what you want because like, you know, you would have worked super hard for it. Um, I, I think the one thing that I have like learned through the 
very long life that I have apparently lived is that it's so important to be ambitious and like figure out who you are and like set those goals but also just like figure out what you are passionate about and live life like like maintain that balance enjoy with your friends and like for me I think at the end of the day like I really care like working a corporate job is amazing but at the end of my life I want to have a different kind of impact I want to have a very powerful social impact and like the things that I'm doing right now like that the reason I'm in market research is so I can understand people and consumers so at the end you know my goal is not to remain here so in terms of like high school I want you to think of high school as a stepping stone for like the goal in your life like never you know even whatever you do in college like make sure you know that this is this is a part of your journey and like it's all a it's going to help you get where you want to go so just be mindful like i think it's really really important to like figure out those goals and it's i'm not saying you should have like a whole life plan laid out but take something away from each like experience you've had and like i i think it's important to be driven and like just have a north star in life so that you have some kind of purpose and have fun while you're doing it at least yeah all of that is actually a really great advice and um i was also going to say a lot of that um i will say like i am not an international student so i am an american citizen um so that being said i don't think i could speak too much to the struggles in terms of like work visa or like getting the job in the first place um what i will say from seeing other people in that situation something to like consider is if you think you would feel uncomfortable in a place that doesn't have diversity like don't try try not to go there like don't <laughs> you know that that could be a criteria for you when you're picking colleges and that's perfectly fine i would say like see if the university has an international student center um and if they don't i mean ask what kind of support they have for international students that's again a great question you can ask the admissions officer when you're uh, talking to them um cuz what that shows is that they really care about their international students and they have those opportunities like they're going to be actively saying like hey here's a job where you know you international students are accepted please apply and stuff like that and just other help too um but yeah i will say this like even though i was a us citizen i did go to high school in india like i was in tsb from 7th grade to 12th grade um before that i lived in japan so like i didn't grow up in the us so culturally too it was diff- like very different for me um i would say like if your parents are willing and supporting you um try to spend a summer in the us doing like a summer school or just coming with your parents and doing a college tour um just getting a feel like i i got the chance to do summer school at harvard which was i don't wouldn't say it helped me directly in my college applications in like making me a stronger candidate but it did give me some exposure as to like what the culture is like here and i did do a college tour in london so i did get a sense of the culture right um try to do that if you can you know if they're willing to help you out with that um in terms of advice of getting into finance or like corporate finance or just tech companies i would say um location kind of matters in the sense that if you do want to work in the silicon valley if you want to work for a tech company try to go to a university that is close to the hqs of those uh companies like if you are in california you are more likely to get recruited for a tech company so just like some or even washington like seattle area like amazon's there microsoft is there just cuz proximity like matters um in terms of like how they're trying to recruit um not saying that they don't recruit on the east coast they do but it's just probably going to be easier um if you're here i would uh, try to enjoy high school as much as you can because things only get like more and more serious and like you, you're going to get like have more and more pressure as you like go through college and then go through your job um try to find mentors like i know i mentioned this previously but like for any goals that you have whether it's professional or like personal find mentors like i think i learned that really late like in my 
not career, but like my education career, um, find those mentors because you, and you want to find someone like who genuinely inspires you, but who also has the time to like invest in you. And like, it's really great to have a mentor because they're, they're just rooting for you. They just want to see you do the best that you can. And yeah, try to find those mentors, build a network, use your network. 